Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy Ricky Cadden from Real Life Trading Australia back again with another Tuesday Real Life Stock Review. Today on the SPY, uh, slightly pulling back some. Now, we did speak about this last week that most likely, you know, I was saying that most likely we would probably come to about 286 before we started to slow down. Uh, we did gap up. Um, but we are getting some pullbacks happening. So if this is going to be the the area we do pull back, I do expect this uh, the SPY to trade back down to the 618. Um, you know, bringing these moving out the 100 simple moving average back in play to hold this stock uh, higher. So the SPY looking for a small pullback short term, but um, Long term, look to buy the dip and then definitely go higher. I'll just take a look at the futures just quickly. Um, forming some beautiful high wave candles right now. Uh, as you can see, I've drawn the Fibonacci here. So most likely, at the most, I do expect a pullback down to 282, uh, 284225. Um, that makes the most sense. Um, obviously, this can be a small little bear, uh, a, a small little bullish flag here, and we can, we could pop out of here. But um, from this massive bullish run that we've had last week, I do expect a pullback to happen. Uh, speaking of things going bullish, here's BYND Beyond Meat. Um, absolutely amazing, amazing short squeeze that just happened last week. Um, if you got to catch these these moves, then absolutely amazing. Great, great move. Um, I did mention I'm not going to be buying up here. Uh, I did try to short this stock, but I tried to short this stock last night and I didn't actually get filled. Um, however, this was a beautiful gap and go on the daily chart. If you take a look at the five minute, this is how you could have played it. Okay, so we had this very bullish candle, bullish high wave candle. Um, you could have taken this with an entry below here and a stop above here for a very conservative play. Um, personally, however, I was trying to take the breakdown of this, this triangle that we had here. So we had a nice support level here and nice little lower highs. Um, and I just didn't quite get filled right here i had my entry to go short just above the high of this candle with a with a low i was hoping for a little bit more of a pullback um but we didn't quite get there but all in all plenty of people making money on bynd um well done i do think this thing will pull back some we've had yeah, I mean, <laughs> some crazy, crazy volume back down here. But um, yeah, most likely we will fill this gap and probably trade sideways and look to see where we go from there. Here's Zoom, ticker symbol ZM. Uh, this was a retest gap last week um, over earnings. So from here, I mean, we could just bounce off this previous previous all-time high level and then bounce out of here. Um, personally, I think we are going to come back down and fill this gap. If we do break the low of this candle, um, I do expect a quick pullback and then a roll back down to fill this gap. Um, but that's, that's ZM looking pretty, pretty exhausted at the moment. Here's Salesforce. CRM and what's interesting about this is we are at the 200 simple moving average. We have been here before. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick Fibonacci check because I am quite interested to see where we are here long term. So we have had a massive bullish run to here. We pulled back to the 382. Okay, so your entry level should be Okay, all right, so back down to the lows here. So technically you should have bought, probably looked at buying here at 143, um, 14306. However, uh, most likely this is a pretty bullish trend. Um, so from here, guys, 
this is most likely going to chop around here for a little while. I do expect there to be some, you know, some higher lows and maybe some lower highs forming a nice little, you know, ascending triangle and then slowly let this thing break out over time. But we should be in a distribution phase right now um, up here on CRM, CRM. So on the daily, I mean, you just want to be buying low, sell, buying low and selling high here. You've got a nice little support level right here and that is at the 200. So you're not buying at the all time highs here. Um, it is a good time to get in solid company. Um, but yeah, as you can see back, you know, between, you know, the start of the year through till, through till May, we just chopped around and we're in this nice little channel here. So if you can play the highs and the lows of this channel, guys, CRM looks great for a, for a buy the dip opportunity. Uh, here's square. I spoke about this. I've been speaking about this the last few weeks. Um, I actually got into some long-term call options on that cute little bearish candle right here. Uh, up very solidly on those. We want to give a shout out to my boy Rich, um, who got into some call, uh, who, who got into some shares right here at 63. So looking really good for a bullish trade, um, a bullish trend right now. This does look extremely bullish. Now, what I do expect Square to do long term um, is probably two things. If we do get this pullback on the markets, I'd probably expect Square to come down to about 67 and then bounce higher. Um, however, this could, I, I did say that most likely this would be the start of a new bullish trend. So if, if we do start, start to go higher here and this is just a pause um, and, you know, we cause, we, we create some nice little bullish flag pattern there. Um, I'd probably expect something of this juncture to occur, you know, a little bit of sideways action and then a push higher. We are at the long-term moving averages. I get that. Um, but Square, solid company um, and a great, great long-term stock to have in your portfolio. So overall, Square looking bullish right now. Look to buy the dip. If you do get a chance to get back in at 65, um, yeah, down here would be a really good buying opportunity for a long-term position. Here's Apple. Uh, now, Apple is looking pretty nice right now. Um, we have had, okay, so we have had this be this bearish run and we did run back up. Okay, so we didn't quite make the 198 on the, at the uh, 198 at the 618 level. So from here, um, most likely if we get a gap down tomorrow on Apple, I do expect Apple to go bearish probably to about 187 um, and, and, you know, fill, fill in a couple of these gaps here. Um, but Apple is definitely a buy low, sell high opportunity right now. If you're not in long-term shares, uh, you probably could sell a cover call for next week um, up here, you know, probably around the 198, 198 level. Um, but, from here, guys, if Apple opens below the low of this candle, this would be a great short opportunity. Um, but yeah, most likely Apple pull back down a little bit and then go higher. Here's Shopify. Now, Shopify, absolutely amazing trend. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm not actually buying up here. Uh, and just to, to see long term where we currently are. Yep. Okay. So we're right at a target right now. So target being $300 and we're right here now. So this is a good time to start locking in some profits, guys. If you're in some long term shares on Shopify, um, most likely we are going to start to chop around and distribute up here and uh, allow, allow, you know, have, have a bit what we had. In 2018, um, this is going to be a really great time to start, you know, selling some premium. And um, if you did miss out on buying the dip, um, you're probably going to get a good chance to buy some dips on Shopify. But long term, um, great stock to great stock to hold long term. Uh, just I wouldn't be buying up here right now. Really, 
really want to be looking for a nice pullback. I don't think we're going to pull back all the way down to all the way down to 382. Although we could um, the 382 at 240. Um, if we did, however, this 100 simple moving average will hold that stock up, and I would definitely, definitely be buying um, something that rhymes with call options on that one. Um, take a look at a couple of the weed stocks. Uh, CRON doing something quite interesting at the moment. We did bounce off the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart. And if we take a look at the weekly, um, yeah, not, not a whole lot happening. We did come straight back down to this resistance here and then, um, and, and then bounce. But if you take a look at the daily, most likely where we go from here, guys, um, I know there's still a little bit of hype around about all the, the, the weed stocks out there, but most likely I expect um, something of this juncture to happen. Okay, so um, I do expect this to be a little bit choppy here, um, but most likely that is what I expect to happen um, on CRO and and probably most of the most of the weed stocks at the moment. It is a it is a good time to buy. Um, you could probably get it back. You could probably get in back off the 200 again in a couple of weeks, maybe, or maybe next week. So keep your eyes on Cron for a buy the dip opportunity and um, look for some short term swing trades. Here's CGC, um, pretty much doing the same thing. Most likely we're going to chop around here as well. Um, yeah, most likely that's what I expect to happen um, on CGC. Uh, on the weekly chart, not really saying a whole great deal. So yeah, from here, guys, just buy low, sell high. I'm not shorting these stocks down at, the, at these levels. Just look to buy the dips and uh, you'll get some really great opportunities. Here's ACB. Uh, as you can see, we have, we're still in this um, beautiful, beautiful wedge here. If you take a look at the weekly, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit more evident. We are going to be here for a while. Um, although we are bouncing off the 200 on the daily. So if you want to, if you, you're looking to go long, this is probably a good, you know, medium level to purchase some shares. Um, however, if the stock does come back down to here, I will be looking to buy a lot more um, on ACB. So keep your eyes on ACB guys. We are sandwiched between the 100 and the 200 simple moving average, um, but definitely, um, this is going to be a long-term buy and hold if you are in at the moment. Let's take a look at gold. Um, gold being quite interesting. So I've spoken about this last week saying that, you know, we most likely sell off up here. We did have a little bit of a sell off. However, um, if you take a quick look at the DXY, um, actually before I go, go into that, um, probably about a month ago, I spoke about this uh, this little trend here. And I said that most likely if we break out of this trend, this could be the start of a new bullish trend. Now, um, if I take a look at the DXY, right, which is the dollar index, I've drawn this. Now, this ascending triangle, we haven't closed below this, uh, below this trend line until just three days ago. Okay. Um, and I'll just hide these drawings. Okay, so we oh, actually I can't hide the drawings. Okay, so um, I'll just get rid of this right here. Um, so we closed below the the wedge here and we are retesting. Now, most likely gold can go higher. So I've said here that worst case scenario on, uh, on the dollar index, if this happens, gold will rise. Okay, so if we, this is a nice double top. Okay, we've closed below here. Now, if we do get a small retest and look to reverse, um, then gold will obviously look to go higher and then we could look to short uh, the dollar index as well. So um, keep your eyes keep your eyes uh, peeled on an opportunity on gold. If you're in gold long, then I'd probably stay, I'd probably stay long for now. Um, Take a look. So we have got a nice, beautiful little hammer here that we formed yesterday. Um, but pretty much we are going to struggle at the at these levels up here. So just 
my my thoughts if you have a look on the weekly chart this is a very solid resistance level it's been there for the like you know for the last five years um so most likely if we do break above here guys just probably look to buy the dip if we do break above look to buy the dip and then ride this thing a little bit higher um so gold looking i'm fairly neutral at this point on gold um and here's a quick look at the Aussie dollar. So I did mention last week that if you didn't get in on the short here, that you'd probably get another opportunity. And the opportunity was literally two days later um, at the short at the short of the the seventy cents uh, the seventy cent mark. And we are looking to go lower here. So if you have a look here, we did get some beautiful volume coming in right here off this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, little doji candle right here and we did close below so most likely from here guys um looking for the aussie dollar to come back down for all my forex traders so um keep your eyes on the aussie for a short here's your lords all lords now uh we have had a bullish run last week just like with the whole broader markets um and from here uh from here i do expect there to be a dip okay um if you're looking for a dip, uh, a short opportunity, uh, that, what's that, what was this? 6621 by, you know, 6670 is probably a really, is a, probably a really nice opportunity to trade. If we take a look at the short term moving averages, you should be able to play this back down to the 10 simple, the 10 EMA or the 20 EMA on the, on the daily. So keep your eyes peeled for a nice little short opportunity on the all lords. Uh, and here's BHP. Um, now I mentioned last week on this day right here that this is a strong bullish gap and go. And we have gapped and we have goed. <laughs> all right, so um, from here guys, I mean, we're back at the resistance level. This was a retest gap. So I do expect there to be some sort of retracement. Um, probably not going to be that high because this is a pretty strong gap and that was a strong bullish gap and go. So from here, guys, if you just take a look at the iron ore futures, uh, I'll just take a look at the weekly. We are bullish again. So just if you're in BHP, keep holding. Um, if you want to take some money off the table, you know, by all means, that makes a lot of sense as on the weekly chart, we are at a solid resistance level right now. However, we could very, very easily break out of here and then just keep crushing higher on BHP. So uh, well done for those who are in BHP long term. Take a look at the banks. Uh, so the banks, uh, CBA forming a beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful high wave candle right now on the weekly chart. This is a time to start locking in some gains, guys. On the 100, on, on the long-term moving averages, we are getting quite a well away from the 100 simple moving average. Um, so from here, uh, most likely CBA will pull back probably to about 78, maybe 77, um, and then look to just buy the dip um, on CBA, but well done for everyone that bought right here um, on, on CBA. You guys absolutely crushed it. NAB doing the exact same thing, pretty much just hanging out. We are at a support resistance level. So most likely we will expect um, NAB to kind of, just chop, kind of just chop around a little bit here. And uh, we almost getting the, the crossover here with the 100 and the 200 on the daily. So NAB, I mean, obviously still looking bullish, but look to buy the dip. Don't get in here. ANZ, same deal. Pretty much look to buy the dip. Look to lock in some profits or sell some premium. If, you're, if, you've, if you own shares on all these stocks and you're looking to hold these shares long term, look to sell some premium. Whether you're going to sell the premium in the money um, that's probably how I would look to play it. I'd probably look to sell, um, you know, if you want to lock in some gains and look to sell some shares, totally fine. Uh, another way you could do that is also by selling uh, the $79, $79 call option um, 
or the $80 call option as well to try and capitalize mostly on your, your covered calls. And uh, here's PLS. Um, so I've mentioned this a few times in my stock review. On the weekly chart, we're almost coming back down to the 200. So if you missed out on this, uh, this dip buying opportunity, this is a level that you probably want to start to at least keep it on your radar. Um, this has been uh, pulling back for quite some time now, and this could very well just bounce, bounce on and mosey out of, mosey out of here. Last but not least, I want to take a look at Domino's Pizza. Um, and we did have a glorious, glorious gap and go on the weekly chart at this level. So I've been speaking about this for a while. If you're looking at buying, if you like pizza like me um, and you want to be an owner of some shares, I mean, why not just buy some shares of Domino's Pizza? Own a few shares and then, you know, look to buy low, sell high. This is a buy low, sell high location. Um, but overall, Domino's Pizza looking absolutely Amazing. Oh, one, oh, one more. We'll take a quick look at uh, the crude oil. Um, I did I did say that I am looking for a long here and this is even better because if we can get a double bottom pattern forming at this, at this price, that would be a really good level to start looking at uh, some of your oil companies like, you know, ConocoPhillips or BP or any of those or, or, or the, the, the leveraged ETFs like oil U. So um, if you are, looking to trade oil, um, looking very good for a long, very, very, very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this stock review. And um, if you haven't yet joined our Facebook page, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, it's just Real Life Trading Australia. And uh, yeah, I will be back on Thursday with another Real Life Stock Review. If you've got any tickers that you want me to look at, whether it's the US market, whether it's the, the Aussie market, or even if you're, you're a Forex fan and you want me to analyze the, the FX for you or, or even some futures trades, uh, leave a comment in the, in leave a uh, comment in the, just below the video here. And I will put it in my next video on Thursday. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you all in a few days, but until then love life, live life and trade it. See ya.